When I first started testing the Cyclic Fly 12, I thought it had a bit of a problem. But as I've moved from testing to just using it, well, I've revised my opinion. Here's why. There's always a bit too much faff when heading out on the bike. The goal is to reduce that to a minimum, especially if you're commuting. So a unit that you can just clip on, press a button and it's working is exactly what's needed. Incidentally, that's also true of the Garmin Varia rear radar camera. Fit and forget is the Fly 12 Sports superpower. It's the dash cam you don't notice until the moment that you really need it. And in this video, I'll explain why I reached those conclusions. Early afternoon in November in West London, the video is running at the optimal 2.7k 30 frames a second. You can see the number plates clearly, and let's be honest, that's the detail you need. A safety camera like this is about providing evidence in case you're in an accident or altercation. The Garmin Varia is clear too, despite running at a lower resolution. It's a radar, light and camera combined. GoPro is best quality, which is not surprising, as the resolution is 4K running at 50 frames a second. Now the static shots. These are screen grabs, the fly is clearer than the Varia, but perhaps not quite as clear as the GoPro. And initially, I thought this was an issue for the fly, given they're all around the same price. And I thought, why buy the fly when you could get the better quality camera in a GoPro? But now I admit, that was missing the point. This is designed as an action camera, not a safety camera. Try to use this as a safety camera and you'd be forever changing the battery more than once an hour. Brilliant action cam, whereas this is a much better safety camera. But I do have another concern, and that is the price, because while this is a camera and light, the Varia is a camera and light and a rear-facing radar, and they're about the same price. So you've got to wonder whether this is overpriced and that is going to be a very personal call. Would a cheaper camera be good enough? This footage comes from a 45 pound camera by Chilitech, and instantly you see it's not great quality. What's more, it's hard to tell when the camera is running, there's no battery life indicator, mine occasionally stops for no reason, and it uses AVI file format that Mac computers don't like. But is it good enough? This happened to me in October. While the video quality is poor, the dodgy overtake and the car registration are clear enough to act as evidence in court had this resulted in an accident. Riding the same roads on the Cyclic Fly 12 Sport, you can see the video quality is significantly better. I'll leave you to decide whether it's worth paying the extra for the ease of use and extra functions. It's going home time in a West London suburb. The perfect time to test this, but I'm not doing it on the bike because I'm going to be fiddling with the resolutions and frame rates to see what works best. Many cycle commuters will ride in the dark. Even at the optimal settings, you're not going to capture much detail on the Cyclic or the GoPro. The built-in lights mean the Cyclic and Varia have more chance of illuminating and catching a number plate. There is loads to like about the Fly 12. It pairs very easily with the app, and I'll just go through that now. Connect it, right, it instantly is recording, so we'll just stop that and dive into the settings. Okay, video first of all. You can see the range of resolutions from 4K at the top, which is only 24 frames a second, uh, right down to 720 at 120 frames a second, and that is effectively slow-mo. Electronic image stabilization, you can switch that on or off. It does reduce battery life, which is claimed to be around seven hours, although that clearly depends on how many bits and pieces you've got running and how bright the light. You can change the, the amount of segment you have for the video length, how much you want to record, and whether or not there's a logo written on there and the timestamp. Uh, in the light, here's all the light settings you can have. Constant, high or low, flash high or low, pulse high or low or you can just have it off and have the video camera running. Uh, the organic mode, well, that's just a flash, it's a kind of a random flash, so that's possibly useful for during the day. Sound, um, beeps, I don't want those beeping all the time every time it's doing something, uh, and then there's a volume level. Mounted above handlebar, well that depends on whether you've got it on top of your handlebars or slung underneath, 
Uh, incident mode we'll come back to. Idle mode, if it's idle for a certain length of time, it'll switch off. Uh, syncing the time and date, you can have it set so it does that automatically. Uh, formatting wipes and resets the SD card. And I should say that, like any dash cam, um, when you are recording files, it will record over files that you haven't saved. But if there's an incident, you press a button on the side um, and that will lock that file. And, and subsequent files won't be written over the top of that. If the fly is tilted beyond a certain angle for a certain period of time, then incident detection kicks in and it saves the file that's running and the video file before it because you might not be in a fit state to be able to do that. Plug into a computer to access the video files either directly like this on a Mac or open up the Cyclic Plus app. This allows you to find footage quickly and do simple edits and because distance isn't always obvious on a wide angle lens, you can superimpose tram lines to show this. Cyclic is Australian where they have meters matter and cars can't pass within one meter of the bike's widest point. So you set your handlebar width and where the device is mounted and this can clarify any video evidence. I have three niggles. It's branded as a 4K device, but to get that resolution, it has to run at 24 frames a second, which is just too slow for a safety camera. Cyclic is happy to say 2.7K is the optimal setting. The mount seems a little fragile. I'd always use the supplied lanyard with it, or better, an elasticated one. Compared to the Varia's secure mount, I wonder if Cyclic could have done a better job here. And I come back to the price. Now, I'm sure people will continue to have questions regarding that price tag, but I guess what you are buying here is usability. It just works. And when it comes to safety, that is undoubtedly valuable. If you have found this review valuable, then I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Please take a look around the channel. One of these two videos might just tickle your fancy. And I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.